get started. So welcome everybody. I'm Lori from Women's Health on the Go. Tonight, we are going to dive deep into oregano essential oil. I know oregano is not the most common essential oil out there, but there is a big reason why I'm gonna be talking about it tonight. Um, so hold on, in a couple minutes we're gonna get started. But as you know, my name is Lori Falk, where I'm a part of Women's Health on the Go, where I talk to women um, about their bodies on how to, whether they want to do conventionally and naturally, holistically take care of their bodies. Um, welcome everyone. Um, if you've been here before, welcome. If this is your first time, welcome as well. One thing that I absolutely love to do is tell everybody just to share the video, okay? Make sure that you share this because the more we can spread this information out there, the better. So please share this video with everybody. And of course, if you um, say hello, if you have any comments, I love the engagement. I do this show for you guys. So, um, you know, if you have a comment, if you have a question, if you have a question, if you could put the word question before, that would be great. Your comment will kind of stick out. Um, but let's get started. Who's ready to talk about oregano essential oil? Let's get started. Yay. Um, but before we start, we're going to, Dave has a joke for us. A penguin walks into the bar and says to the bartender, I'm looking for my brother. The bartender says, what does he look like? <laughs> Very funny, Dave. I love it. All right. So again, tonight we're going to be talking oregano essential oil. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go into basic information. I'm going to talk about phytochemicals, um, the components that oregano essential oil are. I'm going to talk about safety concerns, which are very, very important. We're going to talk about how does oregano oil help us emotionally? How does it help us physically? And then we're going to actually go into actually conditions that it can actually help and support, okay? As I start with all of my shows, I'm going to put out that medical disclaimer. All material provided in this video is for information and educational purposes only and is not intended to substitute your advice of your healthcare provider. It is not meant to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Statements in this video have not been evaluated by the FDA and we are not making any medical claims. Also, the International Federation of Aromatherapists does not recommend the use of essential oils internally unless you under the guidance of a healthcare provider that is a certified aromatherapist. And if you are pregnant, please consult your healthcare provider or breastfeeding before you use essential oils. Okay? So, hi Susie, welcome. We're just about to get dive deep into oregano essential oil. So, oregano essential oil. Now, if you've seen my other shows, there are um, there are common names, what we know as oregano, or we know as peppermint, or we know as lavender, but then there's the actual um, botanical kind of the Latin name, okay? And I'm just going to show you, this is oregano, okay? So this is the common name, and then the Latin name, now there's different Latin names for for different types of oregano. The one that we're gonna predominantly talking about tonight is Oregonum vulgare, okay? Hopefully we are saying that correctly. Because I you know what, even with medications that, you know, when I'm at medications and these long words, they're, they're so complicated. So oregano, I apologize if I pronounce that incorrectly. So oregano is actually very closely related to the majorum family. Um, and it's actually considered wild majorum, and it it um, it grows wild all over Europe. Um, it is a lot like majorum and thyme. And when we actually look at the literature, when when we look at the old books, right? Because if you think about it. All of our herbal medicine and everything, even the use of essential oils, is going to come from historical books. And in the literature, it's actually kind of, it was a little hard for them to decipher, are they talking about majorum, are they talking about thyme, are they talking about oregano, when they're talking about these different herbs, um, because of the fact that they're so closely related. The use of oregano goes back to over 2,500 years. It is said to be the most important antiseptic oil in aromatherapy. Um, it is mentioned in the works of Hippocrates. Hippocrates is like the father of medicine. 
I love him. The more I learn about all these things that I've been learning about natural and holistic medicine, um, the man knew so much way before, um, like now they're coming back to a lot of what he said, which is when they're, now they're doing research going, oh my gosh, the man was right. So he, oregano is mentioned in Hippocrates. Um, there's actually a famous um, gourmet, I'm going to not probably pronounce his name right, but Ipicus, Ipicus, Ipicus. Um, and there's actually, that's from the 4th or 5th century, and he actually was a Roman gourmet, so he was like a chef, and he did have a, um, a, um, a book of recipes. And oregano is was really used in a lot, oregano mixed with actually salt. And it's, excuse me, and it's really still commonly used, um, you know, in their recipes and even including in, um, especially in pizza. Mmm, I love pizza. Um, and the Egyptians used it a lot to disinfect wounds and to help speed healing. Um, now, if you've seen my shows before, we always talk about how is an essential oil made? Is it steamed, distilled, which is a steamed, distilled, and it's using the flowering tops of the oregano. So when you have, obviously, if you have oregano plants, you know, in your yard, you're going to have lots of leaves, but eventually they're going to have flowering tops um, when it gets to a certain point. And that's where, what they use um, when they extract the essential oils for this. Now, what are phytochemicals? Okay, now, if you've seen my shows before, you probably know what this is, but if you haven't seen the show before, um, phytochemicals are basically, if you take you know, oregano or take any kind of plant, okay, within that plant, there's lots of little, and they call them phytochemicals, phyto meaning plant and chemicals, which are chemicals. There's a whole bunch of different kind of chemical components in there, okay, and they work together synergistically, syner, syner, I can't say that word right now, but they work together to work in our bodies to help heal us. Now, when this is how, this is how pharmaceuticals are made. When you have different, all these different phytochemicals, what they'll do is they'll say, oh, we have, and we're going to talk about carbocol. They're going to notice and they're going to do research and they're going to notice that that phytochemical is really important and it's it's antibacterial it's been shown to kill like e coli um, salmonella candida there's been some research with MRSA which is um, um, <laughs> MRSA is an infection that some it's like has antibiotic kind of resistance so like even that is shown to the oregano the phytochemical the carbocal actually is shown to kill that okay so what a pharmaceutical does is it goes oh look at those carbocal okay let's take this from the plant and let's develop a pharmaceutical because we know that that chemical component does x y and z hopefully that makes sense okay the problem with pharmaceuticals is it only takes one component out of the whole plant where the whole plant has everything still in it and it's working all together in order for our body to process it and to use it holistically and more healthy. Okay, hopefully that kind of makes sense. So when I'm talking about the phytochemicals, I'm gonna talk about now there's a whole bunch of them that are actually in oregano that are in all um, plants. But there'll be certain ones that are higher in different essential oils, okay? Now, I'm going to show you. Now, this is where it's really, really important. And this is, I always try to talk about this. It's really important that when you purchase an essential oil, that you buy it from a reputable company, that you know they're doing GSMS testing, gas chromatography, I can never say these words, and mass spectrometry testing, okay? And what they basically do is, I'm going to show you actually two reports from two websites. And I always say to people, if you're going to buy essential oils from a company, if the company shares their reports, then that's a good company. Any company that tells you that, oh, we're not going to share them because, you know, that's a secret. You know, we got a secret formula. Run. Yes, run. Why are they not showing you those reports? Lavender is lavender, um, peppermint is peppermint, oregano is oregano. You may have little tiny like different percentage differences in the different phytochemicals, but for the most part, 
you're gonna know that Carvacol is gonna have a high, you wanna make sure that there's Carvacol in it, you wanna make sure that there's Thymol, which is another um, we're gonna talk about a little bit in this plant. And you wanna make sure that these kind of components are in your essential oil that you're purchasing. Because there's something called adulteration, okay? What is adulteration? Adulteration is when someone takes something and puts a little fragrance of it smelling like oregano and they say it's oregano essential oil. It doesn't have any of these phytochemicals in it. It's gonna do nothing for you but make you maybe smell like a nice pizza pie, okay? It's not going to, it's gonna have no medicinal properties to it. So if you are gonna to go to a website and you are going to purchase an essential oil, make sure there's there's companies out there that show them i you know that and this to me is very very important i'm going to show you when it comes to let's see let's see which one's going to pop up first okay this one is from eden's garden eden's garden com it's an essential oil um company um they sell essential oils online they are very 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 reasonable they have free shipping okay but you can see like see these all this whole list over on the right hand side these are all of the phytochemicals that are found in this essential oil now i know that it's a little bit hard to see um because it's very very tiny but i can assure you that there is um if you were to look at this report you can kind of see that there is a higher component of carvacol and that there's thymol i'm going to show you let me show you a different one that's a little bit um now this is hold on oh, hold on um I got a little difficulties here. Let's see. This one here. Okay. Now this one's from Plant Therapy. Now this is another company that I really, really like. Um, their essential oils are um, affordable. Um, they have free shipping as well. Um, but they also provide their um, reports. And I think that this is really, really important. So you're going to see what they did is um, on their website, if you were to scroll down a little bit, you'd see the same kind of um, report where it has like the graph. But what they do is on the top of the report, they actually list the, the important things that are at the top just to give you. So it's a little bit easier to see. You know, as you can see with that previous one, um, you need a little bit of a magnifying glass and especially for... Um, people who are getting younger like me and um, sometimes I need glasses but you can see now their carvacol that's the top level there that's 60 63 percent and that's that's important we're going to know that carvacol is going to be at a high level it's going to be around there and we want to see that we also see if you look four down you have thymol now thymol is not going to be um, very high as carvacol but you want to make sure there's thymol in it um, and then you're also going to have that that second one is which is that um paracetamide and then that little Y um, terpene. Those are two other components. When I look in, um, now, I know that I've mentioned this before, I have my big, big book, okay? My big essential oil safety book. Um, this is by Robert Tisseran and uh, Rodney Young. Robert Tisseran is brilliant, knows so much about, um, about essential oils the stuff that we really, really, really need to know. And, um, you know, I get all of, I read this, I always do my essential oil safety, especially if I'm gonna be making something for somebody. Um, I definitely look into that to make sure that there's no contraindications. And I always tell everybody, if you are not sure if you're taking something or you're not sure, reach out to me, I have no problem. I'd rather you reach out to me and me look in the book for you and send you a little email back to make sure that um, it's safe for you to use. Um, but you know, please make sure that you do that. Safety, safety, safety. All right, so phytochemicals. So when we're looking at our reports, when we're getting oregano, I'm hopefully that I'm making sense. Let me know if I'm making sense here, everybody. Um, I hope that I'm, this, I'm not sounding too confusing, but when you look at your reports, you wanna make sure that you have Carvacol, okay? It's a typically high. Research has shown that this, it's a, it's a phenol. This is, um, I don't wanna to get too much into the chemistry of it, but it has, it's, potent in healing properties. It can fight several types of bacterial infections such as E. coli, candida, salmonella, listeria, staph infections, okay? So it's it's really 
we, there's research out on essential oils, everybody. There's lots of research out there, and I think that it's important that we know that they, this, there is research on essential oils. This stuff works. You just have to know where to, you just got to go out there and look. This stuff works, and it's amazing. Um, so that's all about phytochemicals. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Let me know um, down below if you have any questions um, or if that all makes sense. So next part, safety. Okay, now this is to me one of the most important things when it comes to essential oils, okay? Because like I said in the pre-show, if you're watching, there are a lot of people out there that are out there educating people about essential oils and they fail to mention this information. They just say, hey, just do this and do this with your kid or whatever. M make sure that you ask someone that is certified aromatherapist or has some kind of background um, definitely with essential oils um, because there are contraindications definitely especially with this um, essential oil, okay? Anybody who's pregnant or breastfeeding should not use oregano essential oil, okay? No, 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 no. It's, it's contraindicated. Um, it can be embryo toxic, which means it could be toxic to your, you know, the fetus inside. Um, and then they're also talking about um, breast milk. Um, it, it, it get possibly excreted. So, no. Anybody who's pregnant and breastfeeding, wait until after you um, have your baby. Um, now, in Robert Tisseran and Rodney Young's book, um, it says that it should not be used on children two years and younger. Now, I have actually seen others where it says talks about not using it under six and under. Um, so I would maybe use a caution first. I would go on the side. I on the side of caution, and if you have a child that's six years or younger, not to use oregano essential oil um, with them. Now, there is a drug or drug interaction. It does inhibit blood clotting, okay? So there is, um, if you are on anticoagulation meds, if you're about to have major surgery, so typically if anybody's about to have major surgery, um, depending on even their medications, because they don't want you to, um, have bleeding problems during surgery. So anybody who's about to have major surgery should not use oregano essential oil. If you have any kind of bleeding disorder, if you have a peptic ulcer, because ulcers can bleed as well, no, no, no. And even if you're taking diabetic medication, according to Robert, um, the Tritisaran and um, Rodney Young, um, no oregano essential oil, okay? Um, there is for dermal wise, but dermal meaning on the skin, um, it could be, it can be very sensitive. So you want to make sure that you're using a carrier oil, which is something like, a carrier oil is something like um, coconut, olive oil, almond oil, um, I'm thinking of um, jojoba oil, which jojoba is actually a liquid wax, but um, they call it a jojoba um, oil. So that's like what a carrier oil is. And you want to make sure that you use that prior to putting on your skin. And you should do like a little skin test. Like if you're going to, especially I usually tell people try to do a little skin test here because this skin is a little bit more sensitive. So if you're going to have reaction, it's going to happen there. So just to use a little skin test as well. Um, it could be muco, mucous membrane irritant, meaning um, I would not use it in my mouth. I would not use it in my nose. Definitely I'm not around your eyes not near your JJ. Um, so definitely, or no diseased skin, no damaged skin. Um, they say just to use some caution when using it, okay? Because it can cause hypersensitive and irritation. It's not saying it's contraindication, it's just saying that it's, it could be really sensitive, so just be very, very careful, okay? Um, all right, so I can see that Debbie joined and M Emily joined as well. Hello, guys. Welcome. We're talking about oregano essential oil tonight. Um, so hope I'm very happy to see you guys. Um, all right, so let's talk about, so we've talked a little bit about the basics of oregano oil. What I like about um, essential oils, too, is that they can also have, like, they can affect us emotionally as well. So when we, it's just like when we, smell certain things like I will tell you this um 
was it this past weekend? And it was a weekend before. I actually went to, um, my husband and I went to a wine festival. And it was a pretty big wine festival. And we're walking around. And there was a section where there was pine needles. And they're all on the, on the ground and stuff like that. And it instantly reminded me of Cape Cod. Um, my, um, my grandmother's from Cape Cod. I've been going to Cape Cod since I was in the womb of my mother. And, um, you know, so I've been up there many, many, many years of my life. And where my grandmother used to stay, there used to be pine trees and it used to smell like pine. So scents can have lots of reactions in our bodies in various different ways. So essential oils are because they have an odor can affect us emotionally as well. So in certain essential oils have um, different kind of emotional they can you know trigger. Now of course if let's suppose you know your grandma used to cook with oregano all the time of course you're gonna have like you know when you had good times with learning how to cook with grandma you're gonna have those kind of good kind of feelings but then the oregano oil is supposed to also have very calming properties. It's going to relax the mind. It's going to balance your emotions. It's going to, like if you're having mental fatigue, it's just going to kind of try to, you know, help eliminate that. It's going to help you get clarity of thought. And it's said to also help if you have any negative emotions and negative unwanting feelings, it's going to help you with those things. So I think that when it comes to any kind of essential oil, I think for the most part, a lot of them are going to have good, happy, you know, unless you've had a bad experience with cooking with oregano or something, um, but a lot of them are going to have really great medicinal properties for us. Um, but then sometimes they have just a little bit of extra, you know, I guess research and um, usage has shown that they will have these kind of emotional um, properties to them as well, okay? As I mentioned earlier, when it comes to physical properties, um, Oregano essential oil is one of the most important antiseptic um, essential oils in aromatherapy. So it has that antiseptic property, it's antibacterial, it's antiviral, it's antifungal, it's antioxidant, it helps with digestive stuff. It's, um, it's also antiparasitic. Um, there has been, I, I read some uh, research that says it could possibly help you if you like have intestinal parasites that it may help eradicate that as well so um i think that's pretty cool and anti-inflammatory i think that when it comes to a lot of essential oils um as i kind of profile them a lot of them have a lot of great like antibacterial antifungal you know they tend to have a lot of these great properties which i think that makes them all very general, right? So a lot of the things that we have in, you know, anti-inflammatory, I've talked about this, anti-inflammatory. A lot of us get inflammation in our body and that's one of the things. So where it starts with, I think it starts with stress. You get stress, you, your body gets inflamed, you know, then we start having, our body starts having symptoms, whether it's diabetes, high blood pressure, you know, all these kind of medical problems, aches and pains. Um, and if you can add some kind of anti-inflammatory to our, our uh, daily regime, I think that it's a really good thing. All right, so how's everybody doing? Everybody doing okay? I hope everything, oh, I see Stephanie is here too. Hi, Stephanie, if you're still here, I'm so glad that you came and you are here today. Okay. So we talked about we've talked about a lot of stuff. We talked about the emotional and physical, but let's kind of see what they can actually what can it really help us with. Now, this is going to be the number one reason why I actually um, wanted to do this. Now, if you saw my two previous shows, my one show was how to naturally prepare for cold and flu season. I did a show about the flu vaccine. Now, what if we get sick? We need some kind of antibiotic, but maybe you don't want to take an actual antibiotic. Well, I found it for you today, oregano essential oil, okay? Several studies, like I said, show that it fights several bacterial infections, okay? A lot of people, even there was some research done on um, people with cystic fibrosis and who were having respiratory, like 
respiratory problems. And oregano was found to be better than drug antibiotics. How awesome is that, okay? So a lot of people, when they get a cold, and I'll take in the, aroma, in the aromatherapy world, or um, you know, in people who do natural remedies, they take oregano. They take it internally. Now again, as I mentioned before, you want to make sure that you 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 know you want to make sure your safety. You want to make sure that you're not taking any medications. You want to maybe talk to someone who's certified and understands. But can you do oregano um, essential oil internally? You can. Do I suggest putting a couple of drops of it in the water and drinking it? Absolutely not. Okay. Does water and oil mix? Anybody? Does it? Does it? No, it doesn't. So. I would definitely make sure that you need to do it with some kind of um, carrier oil. Some people do it with a little bit of honey, so put mixing it in honey. Some people will take like olive oil. Some people will also, um, you can actually get capsules. You can get empty capsules and you can, you know, kind of mix it with your, um, your carrier oil and put it into the um, capsule and then you have your own kind of pills. So um, if you're going to do it, Internally, um, they say like just do three drops and you can do it three times a day, okay? Now, this is the other important thing that you need to absolutely know, okay? You do not take oregano long term. This is not something like, ooh, I'm going to take my oregano every day so that I can prevent myself from getting a cold. No, 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 absolutely not. You should not take this no longer than 10 days, okay, if you're going to take it internally, okay? Um, Susie, thumbs up. Krista, thumbs up. Great to see you here. And Dave, thumbs up. So yes, make sure that you do not take this more than um, for more than 10 days, okay? And make sure that you absolutely mix it with some kind of carrier. And of course, remember, if, you, if you're just joining, make sure you go back to the safety. If you're pregnant, no. If you're breastfeeding, no. If you're taking any anti-coagulation, um, no. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. All right, um, Susie's saying, what carrier oil would you recommend with oregano? Um, olive oil is perfect. I mean, you could do coconut oil as well, um, but you know, you might as well, hey, why don't you keep mixing the Italian stuff, do a little olive oil with oregano. So I think that you can absolutely do it with the um, olive oil, and that's fine. Just make sure when you do it, make sure you kind of mix it all up, okay? Um, it's also good for respiratory health. Okay, it helps fight pneumonia, bronchitis, um, any other bacterial infections. Again, see this is where if you're having respiratory, you may want to again put it on your little in your little carrier oil and rub it on your chest. Okay, um, David says, how about vodka? <laughs> well, vodka is. I don't know what way you're saying how about vodka, um, but. When we're talking about it, so vodka is usually something that we take herbal medicine and ferment it in vodka to extract the medicinal properties. Um, I'm not quite sure if you're wanting to make a cocktail out of that or if you're just thinking of putting a little bit of vodka um, in with that. But, it, you know, it's, it's again, it's another kind of water thing. I would really go with the carrier oil instead, okay? Um, and, Susan, and Stephanie, thumbs up. Stephanie, I'm so happy to see you here. Okay, so again, if you're gonna do for like respiratory help, um, res respiratory help, respiratory help, ah, okay. If you feel like you're having like a, you know, a chest cold and stuff like that, you can take your carrier oil, put like, you know, two drops in there and, you know, make sure that you kind of, you know, rub it on your chest, okay. And remember, you're not gonna wanna do, if you do take it orally, no more than 10 days, okay. Um, so that was a big, so those are the big two reasons why I did it for this week. There are some other things that it can help with, but as we're getting ready for this cold season, which I don't even know, are we going to have a cold season? Because the weather is so warm. This is weather, is not that I'm complaining, I absolutely love this weather, but um, I know that people are already starting to get sick with the weather going hot, cold, hot, cold, what way do we need to dress? Um, and if you're going to um, not get your flu vaccine, which is to me completely up to you. Um, I've told everybody how I feel about that and I gave a lot of back 
actual information from my last show. If you didn't see it, I highly recommend that you watch it. I will put the link of it um, up above because I want to make sure that everyone makes an informed decision when it comes to that flu vaccine, okay? So if you're not going to do that, we're going to do all of our prevention measures, but if we're going to end up getting a little sick, oregano, okay? That's why I definitely wanted to do this this week. Um, oregano is also really good for um, yeast. Um, so if you have, um, now, I wouldn't necessarily use it for, um, I'm talking about like toenail fungus, okay, if we have that, okay? Now the thing with or even if you have like ringworm, ringworm is on like your skin, okay? Now if you have, this is a, this is a little bit of a other kind of, the other kind of carrier that you can use, um, which I wouldn't necessarily swallow, I would, well you probably could, but if you're going to swallow it, definitely use um, like olive oil as your carrier, okay? Um, now if you're going to use it for fungal, like on your feet, Fungus likes to grow in dark, moist areas. So you kind of want to avoid using uh, oil because the oil is only going to trap that moisture in there. So what you actually want to use instead is like an aloe vera gel, okay? But making sure that you kind of, and you're, you're using like a whole tablespoon with just like one or two drops. You're not using a lot of it, okay? So you can put that like in between your toes, you know, get really in there. Make sure that, um, you know, you dry socks. I mean, I'm not going to really go into um, toenail fungus, but even if you have a little bit of like a ringworm on your skin, you know, just a little bit on your skin with the aloe vera. Because you don't want to trap that moisture in because you're just going to make it worse. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, thank you, Dave. My flu vaccine episode was the best ever. Thank you. I actually love doing that show. Absolutely love doing that show. Okay, a wart dim diminisher. You can also, like, if you have a wart on your foot, um, you can mix that, again, in a little carry oil, and you can keep just putting it on that wart. Um, they say that um, for like women's health. Now, I'm not quite sure if I should put this in women's health because this could be for anybody, but it's high in antioxidants, which they say makes it a great anti-aging essential oil. So um, if you um, had, I'd have to actually really think a little bit more about how I would put that in an essential, because sometimes I make, um, I make some blends that are for people. I'm really into oil cleansing. Um, when you cleanse your face, they say that you should use oil because um, you naturally have oil. We have natural oils, a sebum on our face. We have natural oils in our hairs. And when we use these soap products, we're stripping the natural oils from our face and therefore our skin kind of, kind of mass produces um, more oil and that's how people get like oily skin so i usually um, will make um facial oil things um i can't even think of the word right now little um little containers that have like a, just not a lot of essential oil in there but it has a carrier and i even put them on my face um, i know i have some people that have used it for like rosacea and has had really great success um but i would think about i'd have to think about a little bit more about actually using that on a facial one i'd have to We'll come back to that one. Um, oregano oil also stimulates, so for women, it stimulates blood flow, okay? So this is another reason, this is why we don't want pregnant women using oregano, because you don't want to stimulate any kind of blood flow. You don't want to cause any kind of miscarriage, um, any kind of blood flow when we don't need it. But if, let's suppose, you're not pregnant, but your period is kind of late and you want to stimulate that period to come down, then um, oregano essential oil would be really good for that. Some, um, I would say, folklore kind of people, they also do it to help prevent menopause from coming by keep stimulating their blood flow to come down. And you would just use like a, like three or four... Um, drops in like a tablespoon of a carrier oil and then you would just rub it on your belly you would rub it on your back um and that will help stimulate your blood flow you probably do that like a couple times you know maybe twice a day or something um 
And then just in your home, if you think about it, in the beginning of the show, I talked about um, that oregano is the most important antiseptic essential oil in aromatherapy. Now, I personally, I have a home cleaner that I use that I use um, orange. Um, and I use lavender, which is a great antibacterial, antifungal. It's really, really great. And I never really used oregano in any of my cleaning products, but it's a really great essential oil if you're going to use essential oils for your cleaning products to actually, if you wanted to add oregano, because it's a great antiseptic. It's antibacteria. You know, Santa killed, they were showing that in research that it has the potential to kill um, salmonella. You know, so I think that it wouldn't be a bad essential oil to add to your um, home clean products if you wanted to. Um, yeah, I think it'd be great. Hi, Fiona. Hello. Welcome. Um, we're just kind of wrapping up. Um, so that is oregano essential oil in about 30 minutes or a little bit more. As I always do with my shows, my shows are about stimulating your mind, stimulating you to think outside the box, to think about all these wonderful little different things that we have. I talk, and when I talk about medical conditions, I do talk about conventional, but I also talk about natural and holistic ways of taking care of ourselves. So tonight, I just wanted to introduce you to oregano essential oil because you know what? How many people out there actually thought, ooh, let me get some oregano essential oil? Most people don't think about it. They're going to think about lavender. They're going to think about peppermint. They're going to think maybe about orange. You're going to think about all these other essential oils, but you don't, might not necessarily think about oregano. So, and with the cold season coming on and how people actually do use it as a natural antibiotic, I thought this would be a great show to follow up after those other two shows to just open up your mind and to think about oregano essential oil. I think it has a lot of great medicinal properties. Um, I, it, the research that I read, it sounded pretty good. You know, I am very into research. If anybody watches my show, I like to see research. And I know that sometimes, especially with um, aromatherapists or herbalists, you know, sometimes there is no research. It's just years and years and years of using something and passing it down from generation to generation that people continue to use things and have great success with it. Um, so, and you know, with the history, oregano has been around for like 2,500 years. It's, you know, all of this stuff has been around for a very, very long time and they've been using it for years and years and years for all of these, you know, when you talk about lavender, peppermint, all this kind of stuff, and we've been using all of these wonderful things for centuries for healing. And I would love for all of us to start just bringing that back into our homes. You know, um, if you still want to do conventional for various kind of things, I think that's perfectly fine. That's your choice. It's your body. It's your life. It's your choice to do. But if you bring a little bit of essential oils in your home, maybe you won't need to use those medications because you start being healthier, you be more holistic. So I hope that absolutely makes sense. Um, I hope all of my shows always make sense because I know that I tend to ramble sometimes. I love doing these shows. I love talking to you guys about these things. Um, and I'm hoping that I am sparking your mind. So that's it for oregano. Um, I hope that you enjoy the show. If you have any questions about oregano essential oil, please post it. Even if you're watching the replay, please post it. Um, I will, I still see them. It's not like I don't see, I always get a message. So, and so, you know, commented on, you know, your thing. So please post it. Please share this video with as many people as you can. Um, the more it gets out, the more the word gets out, the happier I am. These shows are for you guys, and I love doing these shows. If you want to get a show reminder, I totally forgot about my show reminder. If you want to get, um, uh, if you want to get a show reminder, please just comment below reminder, and you will be put into a kind of little tickler system. Um, yes, Dave, I have written a book. I have to. Um, kind of really promote it more on my shows. I wrote a book, it's called Taming the Yeast Beast, and it's about how to naturally and holistically take care of your vaginal yeast infections. 
It does talk about conventional treatments because I always about making sure that you have all the information so that you can make the choice um, that's best for you. But yes, um, I'll put a link up to that upstairs below, uh, up, upstairs below, upstairs with the flu vaccine show, with the um, beginning ready for the flu. Um, so yes, Stephanie, show reminder, please. Absolutely. Just type remind, like, I don't know if it, how my, I got a little automatic system. So if you want to show reminder, just comment, just the word reminder, because I, I see that reminders in there and I'm hoping that you'll get into the system. But if you didn't just type reminder, then you're going to get a text from Women's Health on the Go. And then you'll just have to respond one more time because um, Facebook wants to make sure you really, really want that reminder. And then you will every week, you'll get a thing saying, hey, we're live. Um, Susie just ordered some plant therapy oregano essential oil. Perfect. I love it. Um, I love plant therapy. I think they're really great. They actually also, um, the guy, Robert Tisserin, who I always talk about, he actually, um, helps them with their testing. Um, so I kind of really like them. I like Eden's Garden, but I really like, um, uh, I really like plant therapy too, because they kind of work with him as well, which, um, so I think that's great, but. Susie, so excited. Yay! All right, I want everybody out there going out and buying oregano essential oil. I'm pretty sure plant therapy, Susie, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they have free shipping. And if not, you know what? You go on to Amazon. If you have Amazon Prime, I am an Amazon fanatic. Go on there and find them. Their prices are not much different from the website to Amazon, and you'll get the free shipping. And they're very, very, very reasonably priced. Um, so um, I'm very excited about that. Okay, Stephanie, great. I see that you said reminder. Fiona, I see you see reminder too. Fiona, I think hopefully you are getting reminders because I think that you should be already on the list. If you are not getting reminders, please reach out to me, um, and I will see what's wrong. But I almost... 100% sure that you should be getting them. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Make sure you share this with as many people as you can. Um, next week, next week is a little bit of a hot topic as well. Um, I'm not quite sure how many people want to, you know, some people might want to come on or not. I'm going to be talking about the HPV vaccine. I've gotten some requests about talking about, they want to know a little bit more about the HPV vaccine. So I, um, I'm doing a show. I did, I think, a really great show on the flu vaccine. I'm going to be talking about, I actually print out the package insert and I read parts of it to you so that you can understand all about it, okay? And I'm going to talk about some research, about statistics that are coming out so that if you're a parent, you can make an informed decision about the HPV vaccine, or even there's some adults that may want to get the flu, the, not the flu vaccine, the HPV vaccine. So I want to make sure that you can make an, an informed decision for yourself, because um, that's very, very important to me. So um, thank you, everyone, for showing up. Thank you so much for the comments. I really appreciate it. Again, if you can share, that would be awesome. I will see you next week. Um, we're going to be talking again about the flu vaccine. So take care, everybody. Have a wonderful week. And um, remember, your health matters, your body matters. But it's also up to you to do all these wonderful things for yourself, okay? Take care, everybody. See you next week. Bye-bye.